So something that is pretty common among Excel users is we like to take charts that we build in Excel and we like to put those charts in a PowerPoint presentation, right? And so, you know, usually if it's one or two charts, it's not too bad. But what happens if we had like 10 or 15 charts? Well, what if there was a way that we could write a VBA script that would automate this process of exporting charts from an Excel workbook into a PowerPoint presentation and more importantly actually creating that PowerPoint presentation for us. Well in this video we're gonna just do that. We're gonna actually create a VBA script that will export a single chart that we specify in our workbook and it will export it to a PowerPoint presentation that we create in the script. Now in my workbook I have some data. This data is being fed into this chart right here. I have a second chart, but I'm going to use that for another video. Uh, and really, the goal of our script is to take this single chart called fake data and export this one to a PowerPoint presentation. So how we do that is first, we go into our VBA editor. And if you haven't already, you want to make sure that you create a, a new module that we can store this little subroutine in. And then once you've created that module, the next thing that we have to do is we have to enable an object library that by default is not enabled in Excel VBA. And that object library is for the PowerPoint object library. And when we activate that library, we will be able to create PowerPoint objects and manipulate those PowerPoint objects from within the Excel VBA editor. So my kind of analogy for it is we allow Excel to talk to PowerPoint. The nice thing is enabling the library is pretty simple. You're going to go up to your little toolbar, so right up here, go to Tools, References. Now. On my system, I've used this library before, so I already have it enabled. But if this is the first time you've ever used this library, you're not going to see it here up at the top like I do. So what you have to do is you have to scroll down to M, so M for Microsoft, and then you want to go to the P section, so right around here. And what you're going to want to do is just check that box, so like that, and by checking that box, you're enabling it. Now for some users, you might see a different number here. Because I'm running the latest version of Excel, I have a 16. This means this is the latest version of the PowerPoint object library. If you're on Excel 2013, you would see a 15. And if you're on Excel 2010, you would see a 14. It doesn't matter which version you have, you just want to enable the latest version. Once you've enabled it, press OK, and now we can start writing our subroutine. So I'm going to call it sub export chart to PowerPoint. And then the first thing that I'm going to do after I create my subroutine is I'm going to declare a couple object variables, but they're PowerPoint object variables. The first one is going to be called PPT app. And then this is going to be a PowerPoint.application object. So just like we're using the Excel application to create our workbooks, PowerPoint is also an application where we create presentations and we store those presentations with information. So we have to create an object that will reference that application somewhere in our code. And you'll see later on in the code, but we're going to actually create a reference to a new instance of the PowerPoint application. And that reference is going to live in this object variable. Now, since we have an application, naturally we're going to want a presentation in that presentation. So I'm going to create another object variable, a variable called pptpres. And this one is going to be a PowerPoint presentation object. So this is going to be the actual presentation where we're going to have slides in it. And that kind of leads into the next part, 
since we have a presentation, I'm going to want slides in that presentation. So I need to create an object variable that will house my slide. And that does it for the PowerPoint object variables. The next thing I want to do is I want to declare an Excel object variable. This object variable we're going to call chart. And then for this one, it's going to be a chart object. A chart object, well, one way to think about it is it's a container. And that container contains information about a chart. And so what we're going to do is we're going to create a reference in our code at some point that will reference the chart that we want to export. So this first one called fake data. And so the chart object variable is going to contain all the information from fake data. And once we set a reference to it, we can do things like copy it. Um, we can change the name of it and a lot of other different things. So it just gives us that flexibility when we're working with charts. After we've done that, the next thing I want to do is I want to create a new instance of PowerPoint because right now there's no PowerPoint application open on my computer. So how I do that is I take that PPT app, I set it equal to a new instance of a PowerPoint application. So that PowerPoint app object variable will now house a new PowerPoint application. And because now it houses an object, it has properties associated with it. And one of the properties that I want to change is the visible property. That visible property will allow me to see this application. So by default, it's set to false. So I want to set it equal to true, so that way I can see it. Now, just to keep in mind, visible just makes it where we can see the application. However, it does not make it the active window in our system. If I wanted to do that, I would have to call the activate function. So the well, activate method. So I would have to call activate, and that would make it the main window in my computer. After I've done that, let's see what we get. Okay, so not, used, not usually like what we're used to seeing. It's kind of right now a shell, so there's nothing really in here. It's an application, but there's no presentation and there's no slides. So this is one of the funny things when you start using the Excel VBA editor or just VBA in general. Uh, there's a lot of stuff that we take for granted. So one of those things is every time we open up a PowerPoint application, it creates a presentation and it creates slides within that presentation in the background for us. But in VBA, we don't get that luxury anymore. It's very explicit. So in this simple script that we've done so far, all we've done is we've said create a new application. We haven't said create a presentation or a slide. So the next part of this is we have to create a presentation. So we want to create a new presentation within the application. And so how we do that is, again, we're going to take that object variable up above called PPT Brez. We're going to call the PPT app. We're going to call the presentations collection that lives within that application. And we're going to call the add method. That add method will add a new presentation in the application itself. Something to keep in mind, presentations, that's a collection. We can think of a collection as a group of objects. The presentations collection contains a group of PowerPoint presentation objects. Now, before we added this line, the presentations collection had no presentations in it. But when we call the add method, we will now have one presentation living within that collection. An easy way to decipher a collection from an object is usually they're, for the most part, identically named. So for example, this is called presentations, and then this is called presentation. The one with the S is usually the collection, and the one without the S is the object, so a single object. 
So let's run the script now and see what we get. Okay, we're starting to get closer to what we want. So now we have an application and we have a presentation within this application. The presentation being this little side pane right over here. So naturally, since we've created that presentation, I want to create a new slide within the presentation. So we're going to take that PPT slide that we declared above. I'm going to call the PPT Prez object. I'm going to go in the slides collection. And again, I'm going to call the add method. It's not the add slide method, it's the add method. It likes to sometimes jump ahead. The add slide method relates to cut, uh, custom layouts. And there's two parameters that we have to pass through. The first one tells us what position do we want the slide in. Well, currently, right now, we have no slides in our presentation. So the slide that we create will be in position one. After we've specified which position our slide is in, we get the option of choosing our layouts. Now, as you can see, there are a ton of layouts that you can choose from. I'm going to keep this example simple, and I'm just going to use the blank layout. So if I run the script now, we get something that we're used to seeing. So now we have a presentation and a slide within that presentation, and all this lives within the application. So now that we've created our presentation, we need to create a reference to the chart we want to export. And so how we do that is I take the chart object variable that I declared above, I set that equal to worksheets, so the collection worksheets, I specify the sheet that I want to export it from. Well, in this case, it's called charts one. And then each worksheet has another collection in it. And that collection is called chart objects. And so the chart objects collection contains all the charts that exist on that worksheet. So in this case, charts one has a collection, a chart objects collection that contains this chart and then this chart. If I want to specify a chart, put my brackets, and I pass through the index of the chart that I want to export. Well, in this case, this is the first chart that I created, and then this is the second chart that I created. So this one has an index of one, and then this one has an index of two. My goal was to export this one, so I'm going to pass through one. Keep in mind, indexes can be a little confusing. So say, for example, I create this one, and then I create this one. But at some point, I decide to delete this one, but then I create another chart in this workbook. The question would be, well, what index does it have? It still has an index of two, because there's still only two charts on my worksheet. So there's only two charts that actually live within my worksheet. So even though it might have a different name, so for example, chart three, it still only has an index of two. It's important to keep in mind because it can be a little confusing when it comes to, well, which chart do I need to work with and what is the index of that chart? Uh, it's important to understand that is, you just have to count it in a sense. Once I've created a reference to the chart, I want to copy the chart. Well, that's really easy. I take my chart object and I call the copy method. Now, now this will copy it to my clipboard. Once it's in my clipboard, I want to paste the chart in the slide. So how I do that is I call the PPT slide, I go to the shapes collection, and I call the paste method. So this will paste it as a shape within that slide. So at this point, we can run our script and see if we got everything that we wanted. <coughs> a 
looks great. So it did exactly like what we wanted. It took the first chart from our worksheet that we specified and it copied that one over to a PowerPoint presentation that we created. So in this example, we were just working with one chart. We wanted to take one chart in our workbook and we wanted to export that one to a PowerPoint presentation. But naturally the question arises that, well, what happens if I have more than one chart? How would my script look if I wanted to export, for example, all the charts on a single sheet or all the charts across an entire workbook? Well, in the next video, we're going to cover that topic. So we're going to go through and create a script that will export the charts from a single worksheet. And then in the second part of the video, we're going to export all the charts in a single workbook. But that concludes this video. If you have any questions, please comment below. Um, and then, as always, you know, please like and subscribe. But uh, yeah, thanks for watching.